Dr. Fauci's emails from 2020 were released. Some people are praising him for his hard work, while others want him fired and imprisoned. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. You know, more and more, it seems like liberals and conservatives are living in entirely different universes, which is making life worse for all of us. Personally, I only want to live in the universe where the McRib is available year-round. But the event horizon for the latest disruption to the time stream revolves around Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and chief advisor to the president on the coronavirus. Thousands of his emails from January to June 2020 were handed over to BuzzFeed and the Washington Post. And yes, we are in a timeline when BuzzFeed is considered a legitimate news source. Here are the 43 ways I'm shocked. Fauci's emails weren't leaked or hacked. They were released through a Freedom of Information Act request. Fauci's emails are out because he's a government bureaucrat. So I've looked through the emails. I'll tell you some of the specifics in a moment. There are definitely things to be concerned about, like the fact that no matter how high up you are in the government, you still have to answer emails. Is there no escape? But Fauci's emails are not a smoking gun. For one, we still have no idea what Fauci was saying in many of them because a lot of the emails are redacted. And some emails, like this one, show Fauci just moved conversations about sensitive topics over to a phone conference. That email was about Twitter banning Zero Hedge for this article in February 2020. It suggested the coronavirus may have leaked from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which of course is where we are today. After being dismissed for months by Dr. Fauci in particular, the lab leak origin theory of the coronavirus has become credible suddenly. Now the science didn't suddenly change, the politics did. President Biden has ordered intelligence agencies to look into the lab leak, only a few months after canceling a Trump-era investigation into it. So when Fauci's emails were released, everyone wanted to know what Fauci knew in the early days of the coronavirus outbreak. Did he lie to the American people? Well, looking at the same emails, left and right-leaning media came to wildly different conclusions. It's a train wreck. And I'll show you why after the break. Welcome back. So liberal and conservative media had wildly different takes on Fauci's emails. BuzzFeed said it showed the incredible pressure Fauci shouldered. They were impressed how Fauci is the type of communicator who is courteous, low-key, and empathetic. Empathetic? He has superpowers? Anyway, CNN focused on emails that show Fauci is a hard worker. Fauci responding to a journalist saying, I am really tired. Not much sleep these days. The worry of an editor of a prominent medical journal encouraging Fauci. You surviving? Worried a bit about your workload. Am hanging in there. Or this email from just an ordinary person that Fauci took the time to respond to. Oh my God, I honestly never expected you to reply. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being so generous. As CNN writes, and if the exhaustion ever turned to frustration, Fauci certainly never let it show. His exchanges, however short, always seemed pleasant. CNBC said the emails showed Fauci's patience, diplomacy, and diligence, and the tremendous physical and sometimes emotional toll the pandemic was taking on him. Wow, so these emails show Fauci is great. Unless you look at conservative responses. The New York Post says the emails show Fauci constantly flip-flopped on whether people should wear masks. Here's Senator Rand Paul speaking to Fox News. But the emails paint a disturbing picture, a disturbing picture of Dr. Fauci from the very beginning worrying that he had been funding gain-of-function research. He says Dr. Fauci should be fired. Candace Owens says he should be put in federal prison. Charlie Kirk agrees. Even Donald Trump is jumping in. So as you can see, people are getting very different things out of these emails. So maybe. We should actually take a look ourselves, eh? More after the break. Welcome back. Although, 
Maybe you never left. You know, YouTube, coronavirus, demonetization. That's why we need supporters like you on the crowdfunding website, patreon.com slash America Uncovered. We rely on your contributions. So as I said, I actually looked at Dr. Fauci's emails. And I got to admit, he's got tenacity. He replies to way too many emails in his already packed schedule. He's responded to emails from all kinds of people, from Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates, to random strangers who happen to get his email address. But the big question is, did Fauci and other top scientists and officials know the coronavirus could have leaked from a Chinese lab, maybe even been engineered in a Chinese lab, and covered it up? We know the Chinese Communist Party initially tried to cover up the coronavirus. They've also blocked investigations into the origin of the virus and have withheld crucial information about the virus. We also know that Fauci, as director of the NIAID, signed off on research grants that ended up funding research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which was studying bat coronaviruses. He's admitted that only recently, but denies it was for what's called gain-of-function research, even though the U.S. research grants for the lab specifically mentioned gain-of-function techniques, like reverse genetics and infectious clone technology. We also know some of the things about the coronavirus's genetic code are unusual or almost non-existent in natural bat coronaviruses. They do make sense for a virus spliced together in a lab. Recently, one eminent virologist called it a smoking gun for the non-natural origin of the coronavirus. And to top it all off, the U.S. government knew the Wuhan lab had safety issues as far back as 2018. Wow, so it sounds like the stuff we already know is pretty bad. But let's look at some of Fauci's emails that are causing concern. This one from January 31st, 2020, is from virologist Christian Anderson saying that some of the features in the coronavirus genome look engineered. However, just four days after writing that email to Fauci, Anderson wrote a letter with other scientists arguing against the idea that the virus had been engineered and branded it a conspiracy theory. Why did Anderson have such a drastic change of opinion in just four days? What evidence did he give that the coronavirus wasn't engineered? None. Since this email was made public, Anderson has now deactivated his Twitter account. And here's an email to Fauci from Peter Daszak. You know, the guy who was taking grant money from the U.S. and giving it to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. On April 18th, 2020, Daszak thanked Fauci for standing up and stating that the scientific evidence supports a natural origin for COVID-19, not a lab release from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Wow, Danzig must be really sad now that Fauci has changed his tune. Dr. Fauci defended himself on CNN about that email. You can misconstrue it however you want. That email was from a person to me saying, thank you for, for whatever it is he thought I said. And I said that I think the most likely origin is a jumping of species. I still do think it is at the same time as I'm keeping an open mind that it might be a lab leak. But here's probably the most mysterious email. On February 1st, Dr. Fauci sent emails to his subordinates with an attachment labeled Barrick Schur et al. Nature Medicine SARS Gain of Function PDF. Barrick and Schur refer to Dr. Ralph Barrick, who collaborated with Dr. Schur Jung Lee, the Wuhan lab's bat lady who specializes in bat coronavirus research. And the PDF was likely this article published in the Nature Medicine Journal by doctors Barrick, Schur, and other scientists back in 2015. The article was about doing gain-of-function research on a bat coronavirus that was similar to SARS. Dr. Fauci told one of his subordinates to read the attached file and do some unspecified tasks. And his subordinate emailed back with a response. Someone named Emily would try to determine if the NIH has any distant ties to gain-of-function work abroad. Were they trying to cover something up? Was Fauci realizing he may have signed off on research grants that created a global pandemic? Or is it possible he didn't know what the NIH was actually funding? It's not clear. 
And that's the biggest takeaway from these thousands of emails. There are a lot of unanswered questions. Why did so many top scientists and officials come down so hard against the lab leak theory? Anyone who suggested it might have come from a lab was ostracized. Even former Centers for Disease Control and Prevention director Dr. Robert Redfield, he got death threats for suggesting it came from a lab. One thing is clear, though. The story isn't over yet. What do you think is going on? Tell me in the comments below. And covering these controversial topics on YouTube is very hard. We get demonetized constantly. Help us continue to provide nonpartisan coverage of America for as little as a dollar per episode on the crowdfunding website Patreon. That's patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.